Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's technical training on uh, GovLand Remote Control. This week will be focused on just GovLand Remote Control, just looking at this one module of GovLand. Uh, we'll be going through all of the features that make GovLand Remote Control unique and special. And uh, again, addressing any questions, you can feel free to pop them in that Q and A section or the chat. Either way, we'll uh, we'll discuss them and we'll we'll answer them out loud if we get, if we can. Um, I'm Ezra, and uh, I'm going to take you through GovLand Remote Control today. Uh, just a bit of background on GovLand, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at if you're new to GovLand and you haven't had it installed yet. Um, I have GovLand Remote Control installed on the desktop I use every day. So this is my desktop, the one I use every day for work, and that's all you need to run GovLand um, in general, and uh, as, uh, as well as GovLand Remote Control. If you're reading through some of the documentation, You'll see mentions of the GovLand central server, and we'll definitely address what that central server is for uh, in this demo. But it's an optional component. You can experience the full features of GovLand without using the central server. So if you're just a, you know, a, a small shop and you need one remote control license, this is a great product for you. <clears throat> so uh, with that, uh, we'll we'll jump right in here. And uh, the first thing I want to mention is uh, I've just uh, launched the console. And uh, you can see this big orange connect button, and I have these options down here. And all these options are different connection protocols that GovLand supports. Um, we use the GovLand protocol by default that's proprietary to us. It includes a whole bunch of tools. This is the premium tool in GovLand. But then we'll also support Microsoft R RDP, VNC, Telnet SSH. We offer a command prompt and a uh, vPro support as well. And uh, so if you if you look through our site, you'll see mentions of free remote control versus paid, and this, that's another thing we'll address. The main feature that you're going to miss in free remote control is the GovLand protocol, anything that's using that GovLand agent. And, uh, and so you can definitely, if you're just establishing RDP sessions or, or VNC or, or uh, Telnet SSH, you can use free remote control and it's still going to include a lot of other features that the uh, native clients don't have. Um, but we're going to get started here demoing uh, the GovLand protocol. And uh, when I, when, uh, to establish a connection to a machine, all I do is hit connect. And um, um, this, uh, this gets displayed for me where I can either enter a machine name or I can also uh, search for a user. And by default, this is integrated with Active Directory. So if you stood up GovLand Remote Control in, in your environment on, on your Windows desktop, it'll wrap around Active Directory automatically so that I can do things like search for a partial machine name. Um, so here I'm just going to type in a partial machine name, hit search, and you can see it presents me with matches. But even cooler than that is I could search for a partial username. And when I search for a username, GovLand is going to query for everywhere where this user has a logged in session right now. So it's just looking uh, for Aaron, and then it's querying for everywhere where Aaron has logged in sessions. And this is a very key and unique feature for GovLand in that you don't have to ask your users where they're sitting. You don't have to play that Abbott and Costello game of having them right click on my computer and telling you the computer computer name, because we all know how that conversation works. So here, I just search for them by name and it'll present you with their login sessions. Um, obviously, this is all assuming you have Active Directory, but if you're just work group machines, uh, we can support that as well, and I'll cover those, uh, how you're going to get that done too. Now, once I'm presented with my list of machines, I can just choose which machine I want to connect to. And it, you can see it instantly connects to that machine. Um, and that is whether you have the agent on the machine or whether you don't. And I'll show you what it looks like if I don't have the agent on the machine. GovLand is just going to install the agent for me. Now, we saw that banner that popped up here and then disappeared. This banner is completely customizable by you. You can put in your own logo and your own messaging, and you can granularly control how it acts. So, uh, and this is all functions within the central server. Uh, you can also get the same thing done through a provided GPO template and some of the features done using the GovLand Agent Manager, and we'll cover each one of those things. But this is part of customizing that user experience. So in terms of displaying a banner, my options are anywhere from displaying no banner and not running in the tray in kind of a stealth mode, all the way toward uh, displaying a banner that requires an end user accept the session before I'm allowed to interact with this machine. <clears throat> Once I'm in a remote control session, 
we're sitting at a lower layer than UAC. So uh, if, if you've used any of the other remote control tools out there, you know that some of them have problems with interacting with these user account control prompts. Right, so you can see I can interact with it without issue. I can click on it. I don't need an end user on the other end to assist me with clicking on UAC prompts. That's another key feature for us. It's because we sit at a lower layer than that user session. <clears throat> now, uh, just to run through some of the tools available to you in remote control, um, right up here at the top, you have some connection settings. You can disable client controls. If you're supporting that annoying end user that keeps moving the mouse and keyboard around on you, you can just you know, disable him, let him sit there until you're, or her, until you're done doing your work. You can put them in an admin mode. This puts up like a custom message and says, so your machine's being worked on you know, uh, by, by uh, company support, please wait. Um, or you can put yourself in an observe only mode. And this shuts off your mouse and keyboard. Um, so that you can watch what's going on on that machine without uh, interacting with that user session. And this is helpful uh, if you're doing some monitoring and you don't want to, you know, obviously move the cursor around when you establish the session. Um, just uh, moving along down this list here, we have a login prompt here. This will send the control all delete through if I click on it. Um, and the little down arrow will, will do things like display power options, lock the workstation, log off the user, and configure auto log logins. And uh, another, another um, uh, differentiator uh, with Goverland is because, again, we're sitting on a lower layer than that user. I can log off this user and log in as another user, uh, all while maintaining that remote control session. So we're not going to have to end our remote control session and reconnect that, that Aaron Woods is now logged on, and I can decide to switch users, or I can log Aaron Woods back in. It's, it's really that simple and straightforward. Um, so it really gives you a very good control over this machine, even though you're remote. There's nothing you really can't do uh, on, on that remote machine. Um, just uh, moving along here to some of the other tools available, I can chat with the end user or send them a pop-up message. And by the way, if there's multiple operators all needing to work on one machine, uh, multiple operators can log into one remote control session, pass controls back and forth, collaborate, chat with each other. So it's really uh, full featured in that sense. And then we have a whole bunch of uh, tools here in the top ribbon. And these tools are all coming with the Goverland protocol. These are all the premium features. So if you're using free remote control, you're not going to have access to and, um, and it will launch a free remote control session just to show you that difference here. And so the first tool here is the task manager. And we'll just work through these because some of these are very unique and kind of special. So I do like to point some stuff out. You can see that this uh, first one is definitely unique. It's not the native Windows task manager. It includes this very key feature missing in the native Windows task manager, which is hover states on these, on these charts. So if a machine's peaking, I don't have to do guesswork to figure out what's going on. I can just hover over it and see what's causing uh, a peak. We also have the top five talkers in real time, which is just the top five in real time in each one of these categories. Top five by CPU, disk IO, memory, and page faults. Just another nice little feature. And then uh, process parent relationship. So instead of the normal, normal uh, processes that are running, you can hit this, and then you can see all the child processes that are running as well. So again, if a, if a machine's having an issue, you can really get a better idea of what's going on. One of the nice things here is that all of these tools that we're going to pull up sit outside of that remote control session. So they're not going to kind of clutter up your space. And if you, you know, a user is reporting an issue on, let's say, their machine, you can keep them open in, let's say, uh, uh, observe only mode and then have this task manager open at the same time so you can really get an idea of, you know, why they're having uh, the issue they're having. Uh, so moving along here, we also have a file manager, and this will allow me to explore the files on that remote machine, move around files, move around folders, anything like that. Um, just uh, doesn't look like it launched it. There it is. Um, and and uh, one of the interesting things here, and with all these tools, is that they're all spawned as me, the admin, as opposed to as the end user. So even though there's a log, the the end user logged into this session is is still Aaron. Um, my tools are being spawned as, as, as the admin, not as that end user. And that's key here in this next tool we're going to look at, which is a command prompt. 
So if you have used for a command prompt, you can see that the command prompt is spawned as me, the administrator, not the logged in user. So it's a permission command prompt. Now, anything I do within this command prompt, it's not going to display inside that remote control session. So if I need to do like an IP config on this machine, by the way, this is kind of cool. You can store all of your favorite commands in a list here. Uh, you just add new, you put in the command. So if you need to do an IP config, again, it's, you're going to experience no change. The end user is not going to see anything, but you can see that I did the work. And it's also PowerShell enabled. So if you just type in PowerShell, it'll switch over to that PowerShell command prompt. Just another really nice tool to have available. <clears throat> Next here is Power Options. So Power Options is going to provide some great information. Uh, I love this piece of detail right here, the uptime on machines. You know, we all face users who are like, hey, I'm not getting updates or my machine's acting really funky and or Outlook's not working anymore. And you can say, well, when's the last time you restarted? And they say two days ago. And then you pop this open and you see it's been 25 days and you can say that's the reason. So, um, so this is a great piece of information. You can see it's uptime. You can see it's IP address, uh, agent status. And then um, this machine is vPro enabled, so we have a couple of extra features, but with any machine, you can power it off, standby, restart, restart to safe mode. Uh, for vPro enabled hardware, you can also restart to BIOS and restart to a mounted image. So this is very cool technology in here, the support for vPro. And uh, in any case, I can always log off the user and manage all the logins. Now next we have uh, the ability to print. Uh, we can take snapshots and we can record remote sessions. We'll take a look at that a bit more. And then we have this uh, file transfer, these drag and drop, drop zones. So I can basically grab things off my local desktop or anywhere on my local machine and I can drop them into designated drop zones. So in this case, uh, I have three drop zones set up and you can add new ones. Uh, my drop zones are this Goverland folder on the desktop the system root and the system32 folder. What I'm going to do is just grab a uh, PDF file that I have on my local machine here, and I'll drop it into that Goverland folder, and it's just drag and drop. I just dropped it in, and now we're going to see that Goverland uh, suite product brief on that remote machine. So it's just a secure file transfer, and this is using the same uh, firewall port that we use for all communication. So all communication between the console side and that remote machine is using a single configured by you firewall port. We have a default port. If you're watching the intro slides, uh, you would know, I think it's uh, 21158. But uh, you can set it to whatever you want, and then we'll set up our own file transfer on there, and, uh, and it's secure encrypted in both directions. And uh, it, it is in both directions as well. So if I want to grab a file off of my remote machine, and copy it to my local machine, all I do is to hit copy, and you can see it becomes available to me in my clipboard here. And all I have to do is click on it, and I can decide where I want to save it to locally. So I can send the file from my, remote, from my local machine to my remote machine, and I can also grab files and text from my remote machine and send them back to my local mm -hmm. machine. So we got uh, two directions here. <clears throat> So um, that takes care of drop zones. In optimization, we also have the ability to do things like reduce down to grayscale, reduce refresh rates, anything you need to get more, more out of the product. Uh, this product is used for a lot, a lot of like very specific use cases, remote uh, ATMs or, or in casinos and stuff like that. And it's very full featured, and you can also really adjust down um, uh, how much bandwidth you're going to use. So if you have an ATM sitting out there somewhere uh, in, a, in a remote location, which is dial up, uh, we'll be able to manage it pretty well. And again, everything's encrypted. So that's another key feature is that, um, you know, that, that encryption there. So you, you know, you, you can be rest assured everything's secure. Uh, the other thing that we offer in terms of, um, in terms of compliance security concerns are uh, session history. And this is another unique feature for Goverland. So if you have any types of comp compliance concerns and you're using some of the other uh, remote control tools out there, just know that you may be at somewhat of risk if you can't provide a report of what the admins have been doing. So you can see here, I just pulled up you know, which, which admins connected to this machine, um, the name of the machine, the session start time and end time, and who the console user was at the time. 
And uh, this is a great report for your auditors if you have those compliance concerns. Um, so next year, we're going to establish another remote control session. And you can see that, um, it, you know, Goverland offers these tab views. So I can just add in tabs instead of having to spawn a, a, um, a, a whole new, um, I guess, uh, uh, console. Uh, we, you just open a new tab and we support as many tabs as you want. So you can have as many remote control sessions as you want. If, if you've looked at our pricing at all, or if you're, if you're familiar with us, you know we're price per operator. We don't care how many uh, sessions or agents you deploy or anything like that. So here I just opened a new tab and I'm gonna hit this connect button again. And now we're gonna connect directly to a machine. So I'm gonna type in a partial machine name. <clears throat> hit search and we'll connect to this Longhorn 3. And I'm just gonna hit connect here and we'll establish a connection with Longhorn 3. And um, here I just have our, our Deerfield Beach has some uh, underwater cams that are pretty cool. So uh, I'm just gonna have this running and uh, you'll see why in just a second. And now uh, it's pretty neat. It's like the local pier and you can see what's going on underwater. And now I'm gonna add, uh, I'm gonna, uh, add another remote control session. And here we're gonna launch one against uh, another machine called Longhorn 2. <clears throat> and there's nobody logged into this machine. By the way, these in your in this tab view, it kind of helps. This little key in the middle will uh, will send the control out the lead through. So if you want to quickly log in, um, we can uh, we can do that as we can just take care of that. Okay, so now I have three remote control sessions open. And by the way, I didn't mention this V Pro machine has multiple monitors. We support as many monitors as you want to have connected. I, I think I helped somebody with up to eight. Um, and you can see we can span across them. Um, I can move between them, focus on each one individually, and it's going to scale according to the resolution that you have set on those monitors. So you can organize it however you want. They'll support multiple monitors fine. And then as we tab through here, we have all of our different remote control sessions going on. Now, the cool thing here is that I can switch to this monitoring. And this monitoring view, we can set it up against as many machines as we like. And what, we're, what we've done here is we've just reduced the refresh rates on each one of these machines down to one second. You can add these heat map performance counters that are running underneath each machine. So I can turn on and off whatever is important to me. Maybe I don't care about CPU percent or memory, but I do care about uh, you know, bytes send and receive and, and, and usage and stuff like that. And so now if I double click on any machine, it'll take me into a one-on-one -on -one session and I can jump back into my monitor, monitoring view as well. Um, at any point, if you're using this monitoring view and you have us running in stealth mode or not, you can decide that, hey, I see something going on on one of these machines that I want to make note of. I can right click and start recording video to file or spawn any one of these tools here. So uh, from monitoring, very quickly jump into a recording. And uh, when I show you this, um, this uh, connection again, we're going to establish a connection to one more machine here. And, uh, but this time, I want to show you that I can also initiate this connection in observe-only mode. You know, let me just uh, close out one of these others. I'm just going to disconnect from this one. And we're going to reconnect to Longhorn 2. But this time, we're going to connect in observe-only mode. So it's going to shut off my mouse and keyboard. And you can see that some other options are available to me. I want to hit this options button, things like, uh, you know, setting the optimization, uh, disabling the remote keyboard and mouse, or activating the clipboard transfer. And I can also decide what credentials I'm going to use for this connection. And this is not who I'm going to sign it in as, it's who's, what credentials those tools are going to be spawned as. So this time I'm going to connect in observe only mode. And when I hit connect, it, you can see that uh, the little, um, my mouse cursor has that little, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, disabled sign, so I can know that um, I'm in observe only. I, from here, I can easily shut that off, and now I have control over that remote machine. So you can enter in observe only mode, and then once in observe only mode, or in regular mode, you can always record these sessions. And I can set up these layouts here, so, and, you know, to as many machines as you like. Now, once you have a, a set a layout set up the way you like it, let's say it's your three critical servers or your three most annoying end users, whatever it is, whatever it is you're dealing with, 
You can click Save Layout, save it as an icon on your desktop, uh, three annoying end users, or wherever else you want to save it. And then that layout will be available. So if I close this out, um, and we just look for that layout on my desktop here, three annoying end users, and I double click on it. It's just going to reestablish those three sessions automatically. And this is great. And, and by the way, this works no matter what protocol you use, whether it's RDP, VNC, Goverland. Um, it'll just reconnect using the last, using whatever, you, whatever credentials and whatever information you save the layout as. And so if you're coming in in the morning and you want to have instantly open your, your critical servers or you want to have access to three machines very quickly, save the layout, you know, it's, it'll be available to you. Uh, the layouts you can also organize in a lot of different ways. So if I grab one of the tabs and drop it in here, I can create like a horizontal grouping where I have, you know, a focused view of this machine and then I have the monitoring view of the two up top. So you can get pretty creative uh, with how you organize these layouts. Um. <clears throat> so uh, other thing I can do here is I can float um, I can float a, a tab. And so what floating a, a tab will do is just uh, if I want to have like one of these views open in full screen mode on my second monitor, I can float it and then move it over to my second screen here. And then I still have the other two available here. And uh, it'll indicate that that tab is currently floating. And if you click on it, it'll just bring it back into, into your session. So the float is good as, you know, if you want to just have, you know, one dedicated on your, on your second monitor, like, hey, this is always this view. So you can really uh, organize this in, in a lot of different ways. So uh, that covers... Um, you know, my layouts and, and, um, and some of the tabs and, and floating tabs. And now I want to show you something, uh, uh, favorites here. So favorites is a great way to save access to machines you use often. Um, and so, and this is also, if you're in a work group environment, this is definitely the way to go, is to save all your machines as favorites. Really, really simple. We have shared favorites. A shared favorite is if you're using Goverland in a team view, it'll add these favorites into everybody's shared favorites section. But the regular favorites, it's the same thing. You just you can either add a container or a single computer. We'll start with adding a container. And in, in, you know, if you're if you're uh, in a work group, you can grab a static container or an IP subnet range. Here, I'm just going to grab an Active Directory container, and I'm going to call this Lab Servers. And all I do to add the favorite is I'm going to just browse through Active Directory and find the machines I want to add into my lab servers. And here it is, just these, this OU. That's what I'm going to add in. And just hit OK. And you can see it created a folder here. I double click on it, and it's going to give me access to my lab folders. Now, once you have your favorite built out, the cool thing that you can do here is right click on it and do, uh, do set actions on the entire group. So on the entire group, I could say, I want to spawn remote control sessions. And it's just going to go out there. You can see, by the way, a couple of my machines don't have agents. OK, so um, for the machines that don't have agents yet, Goverland is just going to prompt you to install the agent. And you can say, yeah, just install the agent and proceed. And these are all the machines that didn't have the agent. So I'm just going to go through them, and I'm going to pop the agent onto each one of those machines. And you can see as soon as I popped it on, uh, this machine is actually powered off. As soon as I installed the agent, it established the connection. So if you're standing up Goverland for the first time, you don't have to pre-configure your machines with agents. All you do is establish a connection. And it's going to say, hey, I don't have the agent. Do you want to install it now? You just say yes, and then it'll, it'll, it'll establish that remote control session. But here uh, now my tab view, my, my, uh, my monitoring view has a lot more machines, and there's all these machines open in tabs across the top here. <clears throat> OK, looks like uh, lost connection to those two. So uh, that covers favorites. So now the cool thing, by the way, if you're working in a, uh, in a work group environment, is you can almost go about like a little fake active directory where you have like, let's say, each one of your locations or each room in the office or, or just individual. You can also add individual machines. So I can say, I, I want just a quick favorite to my Longhorn machine. So I can come in here and just add that. And now it, it appears separately in the list. So you can really organize the favorites however you want. And again, you can share those favorites. So if there's, uh, 
if uh, you know you want to uh, you, this way you don't have to replicate the work I guess if you're if you're going through uh, a lot of effort to set up your favorite folders you can you know set it up for everybody else at the same time <clears throat> okay um, so let's talk about the agent manager a little. So um, the agent manager is a way to uh, bulk manage the agents and also manipulate the settings on the user side, on, on the client side. And so you get to the agent manager by going to help and then Goverland agent manager. <clears throat> Okay, we have a quick question about how to access the favorites, and I did forget to uh, point that out, so I apologize. It's in the command menu. So in the command menu, the top left, just go down to show, and then show favorites panel. And then you can actually pin it there, um, so that, and then, you know, this way it'll, it'll show and hide and organize it however you like. Okay? <clears throat> Uh, there's some other options, by the way, in that command menu that we didn't point out in our tools. Things like sending a wake on land packet to a machine. Uh, these are specific session tools. There's some other stuff in here as well. The credentialing manager where you can store alternate credentials, but uh, we can discuss that. Another. And then also your recent connection. So like if you know you've recently connected to a machine, you can just jump in here and click on it and it'll reestablish that connection. So uh, back to the agent manager, which is in the help menu on the top right, Goverland agent manager. So this will let you manipulate the agents in mix. So instead of having to add and remove agents one at a time as we establish connections, if I want to pre-configure all my machines or if I want to update the agents all on all my machines, I just hit this plus sign to get started. And I can add a single computer, domain computers, computers by IP scan, or even import a file. So this will work whether you're an active directory or work group. I'm going to go and grab a bunch of domain computers, and you can see by default, by the way, you don't have to do anything to get us integrated with Active Directory. That happens automatically, right? So here I can just navigate through, and I can come down to some production workstations, and I can say, hey, I want to manipulate the agents on all of these machines. Okay, And when I do that, it's just going to do a quick scan, and it's going to tell me all the agents are up to date. Now, if I move this over and I go and I yank the agent off of this one machine, by the way, the, the agent adding and removing the agent doesn't affect the end user. It's very important to know because you can feel free to manipulate the agents as much as you want. It's not going to affect the end user at all. The only, thing, the only person that it affects is obviously you. If you don't have the agent on there, you can't establish a, a connection using government remote control. So I can just pop the agent back on, and we'll see this connection reestablished as soon as it uh, as soon as it goes through again. So you can add and remove the agents. It's transparent to the end user. It's not going to cause a restart or anything funky like that. You can see that that machine just uh, reestablished here. So uh, once I uh, once I have the agents on there. I can use the Goverland Agent Manager to set settings on the client side, right? And that's what the set remote control client side configuration is going to do. And this right here is the primary purpose of the uh, Goverland Central Server, and that is distributing policies. And we're going to look at the Goverland Central Server quite a bit, but uh, you can see here that there are some basic policies I can use. In my case, they're disabled because I'm using a central server already to distribute these policies. But some of the things that I can manipulate within the uh, within the agent manager are uh, the pre-session action. So I can decide I want to prompt the local user for approval. That means the banner is going to get displayed. The operator, the admin, is not going to be able to see the screen until the end user clicks, I approve this. You can lock the workstation, you can log off the user, log, log out the local user, or disable remote control. So this is pre-session, right? Uh, you can also decide how long you want that visual notification if you have it set to disappear after a set time frame. And you can also set some post-session action. So after I disconnect, do I want to lock the workstation or log out the local user, or display a visual notification like, hey, the, the tech is no longer, uh, no longer managing this, this machine. So those are some of the some of the things you can control just using the agent manager. So the big difference between the agent manager and the central server is the agent manager, and for that matter, the GPO template is only going to be as up to date as the last time you publish the settings. So it, you know, if I publish the settings and then two weeks later I reconnect to a machine and I say 
oh, it's still prompting the local user for approval. It's because you never republished the settings, right? Um, in the Goverland Central server, as soon as you click, you know, as soon as you modify, it's it's near real time. So the the difference is in, in the Goverland Central server, the agents are the the uh, remote machines are reaching out to the central server and seeing if there's a new policy for them to use. And we're going to look at that right now. <clears throat> so um, in here, we're just going to close all of these tabs here. Uh, and then I'm going to disconnect from here. And we are going to connect to uh, my AD uh, server, which is where I have um, um, our GCS located. And uh, you can see that uh, with the AD search, it really helps because you don't really have to know your machine names. I did a wild card at the beginning at the end, and I'm able to set focus on this machine and hit connect. And this is our Goverland Central server running. Okay, so we can take a look at some of the different features available uh, within the central server. And uh, the question coming in, yes, this webinar is being recorded. So uh, a, um, we are recording it. It'll be posted on our blog, and I'll send out a link to everybody in attendance. So if you do need a drop, not a problem. Okay. So um, what, what you're looking at right now is you're just you're looking at that our central server is running. I can decide to stop, pause, or restart it. And you can see each machine is periodically checking in and just checking for updates. Okay, it's just checking to see is there a new policy available for me? Um, is there something else that I is there a change that I that I need to go through? And then let's look at some of the different settings and policies that you can set, that you can deploy. And so. Uh, it's a uh, it's um, a, a little bit uh, not the the most intuitive part of Goverland, but this is again uh, our, our server application, and again not a mandatory tool. It just gives you a little bit more granular control. And so some of the things you can uh, you can set policies on include just some some of the common features like how we're going to connect to Intel vPro or how we're going to uh, manage application directories. But then I have feature restrictions. And this is uh, very much a, a, uh, a requested from our from our user base is you know let enable us to turn on and off specific features on the admin side, and so feature restrictions is a big thing. So like maybe maybe you're providing uh, access to Goverland to your level one team, and there are certain things you don't want them to be able to do. Right, so you can turn on and off specific features for your text. You can say, you know, I don't want them to be able to use RDP, VNC, or Telnet, or I don't want them to be able to force observe only or, or use the clipboard transfer. You can decide whatever you want to turn on and off. Okay, and you also have client side feature restrictions. You can decide maybe you don't want to be you don't want your clients to be able to disconnect the remote user. <coughs> I want to take a look at the remote control behavior, right? So that's the thing we want to look at. And you can see it's very similar to, uh, it looks a little bit different, but it's very similar to the uh, to what we saw in the agent manager. I can decide on a pre-session action. All I do is double click this. And you can see that uh, once I double click it, I can decide uh, which machines I want to push out this policy to. And this is very cool because you can have really granular control over which policies get applied to which machines. And obviously, we want this, right? We want to be able to say, hey, for my C-levels, I always want to prompt the local user for approval because I want to protect my job, right? But for, you know, the, the, uh, the, the you know, some other workstations in the shipping department or something like that, I don't want to even prompt the local user or display a notification. I just want to jump right in. So all you do here is you would add a scope of machines uh, I'm going to create a new machine group here, and you can see it's still Active Directory integrated, or you can add individual objects. I can come in here, and I can grab an OU of machines, and I can say, for these machines, I want to use this policy, and you'll have all of your different policies set up. Okay, and so if I if I add another scope of machines here, maybe I have an existing group already. Let's say I want I want it for Goverland Tech. I want to use the following value, and I want to say five. And then for every other machine, uh, I'm not going to enforce the setting at all. So that's how you would do it. You would just define your scope of machines, and then you would decide what session action you want. 
Uh, just a quick question, just reading through it. Um, Right, yes. So um, th this question relates to offline machines and uh, storing of offline information. And uh, I guess this, uh, um, in, in previous versions of Governland, we, we were in entirely a real-time product, so there was no database at all. And uh, you know, for all the other functionalities in Governland, that was really huge because all, almost all the other products in the space uh, rely heavily on the database. If you're using something like SCCM, you know it's entirely database-driven. And so one of the one of the downsides of being real time is you weren't we weren't storing good information on offline machines. In in Governland version eight and on, we've introduced this concept of shore data, where we have a database for offline machines, so you can always see information on offline machines as well. So we're saving some key information on offline machines, and where where if a machine's online, you're seeing real time. If you're if a machine's offline, you're seeing last available. And uh, the last IP address would be something we stored. And I can uh, follow up with you on on some information on that. So um, just uh, moving through here, um, you can see that I have a lot of control over uh, all the different settings, different visual dis visual displays, and different things that are going to happen as I establish connections. And down here, we're going to even have the branding and localization. So I can decide, um, you know, um, um, any of the uh, if I want to put in my own logo, if I want to put in my own messaging, anything like that. This is the logo for admin mode, which is where we display that custom message. So you have all of that control. Uh, the bulk of it is going to be in the in the Coverland Central server. <clears throat> and by the way, as soon as you republish a setting, as machines continue to check in, um, they'll just uh, you know as they check in, they'll see a new setting and they'll update their settings. And if you're watching this uh, little slide deck um, as we were going through, there is a slide on the Governland Central Server, and you can see that there is a listening port that has to be available if you're using the Central Server. We use a default port of 21160. So again, the Central Server, the main main feature is are these universal policies, whether it's uh, you know feature restrictions or how or the client side configuration universal policies. But then we also have audit on Governland events. And this is some very cool stuff too. Uh, first one was we already took a look at was the uh, recent remote control session activity, right? So that's the, that's information that's stored in the central server. And the other one is user login, log out events. So this is a great thing to have. Uh, Governland keeps its own repository of user login, log out events. We use that to enable um, the uh, fast connect feature, which is where I can search for a user by name and instantly connect to their session. <clears throat> okay, so um, high level, that covers our Governland Central Server. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look at here is um, how we handle RDP and Citrix sessions. And this is another very, very cool feature, also unique to Governland. Um, Quick question here, uh, would the Governland Central Server allow reporting of logged in users on computers across multiple subnets? And the answer is yes, you can also install multiple central servers. So it's, it, it is a free utility. So, um, uh, you know, it, um, but yeah, you can definitely arrange that. Um, I think uh, we work through DNS zones and there's, there's another way of configuring it, but I'll follow up with specific information. <clears throat> So uh, I'm just going to disconnect here, and now we're going to take a look at this fast connect feature again, which is where I can search for a user by name and get instantly connected to their logged in sessions. Um, and so uh, we're actually going to connect to one of our developers who's working in the other room, and he's connected to an RDP session. So what I'm going to do is switch to uh, searching by uh, user. And the, the cool thing here is that um, if you're working with RDP or Citrix, you know that it can be, if a user is having an issue with uh, Citrix or RDP, it can be sometimes a, a little bit of a pain to kind of unwe uh, kind of weave your way through what exactly is going on. How do you find out 
which server which, which server their Citrix or RDP session is being hosted on? How do you troubleshoot them? How do you have a good way of shadowing that session without disconnecting them if you need to be able to see what's, what they're experiencing? And, and we fully support Citrix and RDP, and we're actually in the Citrix marketplace. We're a Citrix-ready product. So uh, you can feel comfortable if you're, if you're standing up a Citrix environment knowing that you have a tool to support your Citrix users. And so uh, here I'm just going to search for this user by name. In this case, I'm going to search for by first name. Oh, I hit a button. All right. So his name's Victor. And uh, we're going to look for Victor Diaz. And when I set focus on him and hit connect, we're going to query for everywhere where he's logged in. And you can see that Victor Diaz has two logged in sessions right now. One of them is his actual desktop, this GovMIA Office 106, right? That's his physical desktop. And through that physical desktop, he has a session on uh, this Dev0, which is our development server. And so I'm going to hit connect on this one. And what we're actually going to do is shadow his, uh, shadow his session on, on the, on the uh, dev server here. And you can see he's got some uh, crazy developer stuff going on. And we're going to display a notification. And I'm not going to try. I'm going to try not to mess with him too much here. So we're going to go in observe only mode. Um, uh, and so uh, you can see that I've now, I'm now shadowing his user session. And if I click up here, um, you can see that PJ, PJ Tech VD has logged on remotely from Gov MIA Office 106. And this is also very cool because not only are we showing you that, not only are we shadowing his session, on, his RDP session, but we're actually displaying what machine he's using to connect to that, to that session. Now, if I click on this, it's going to switch me to this console view, right, where I can see uh, I can either connect to the physical console, the server that has all of these sessions being hosted on it, right? So this is the actual server. Or I can move between any one of these other user sessions or open all of them. So I can easily jump over to um, Eugene's session over here uh, or, or back, to, uh, back to Victor's or open up all the sessions. So you have really a lot of control, a great support tool for, um, for Citrix and RDP. And I'm pretty sure this task manager in here, let me just take a look and make sure I'm right. Yeah, so this task manager is really cool because again, it spawned the task manager as you, the admin, not as the end user. So you're actually seeing the task manager on, on the uh, hosting server. So now from here, you can see all the tasks by the different users. And so I can, if, 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 uh, if I know that it's, it may be one specific user that's causing an issue on the server, I can quickly get an idea of consumption by user. I can jump, I can actually drag this in here and create groupings by user and stuff like that. So a lot of controls here as well. And uh, you also still have that process parent relationship, so you can see all those process, uh, child processes and stuff like that. And uh, so it, the same is with all these other tools. It's all spawning against that hosting server. <clears throat> so I uh, just want to answer a couple of questions that have come in. Um, somebody's asking about uh, some uh, not happy about supporting their Macs that are not on their network. Can I use GovLand to connect to them? And so uh, what I'm going to answer uh, is not at the moment, right? But within a couple of weeks, uh, we're not only releasing an agent for Mac, but we're also within that GovLand central server going to be releasing a proxy server that will allow you to communicate with any machine that has an internet connection and our agent on it. So give us a couple of weeks, you'll have the agent for Mac, and you'll also have uh, the ability to manage machines off network. So you're going to get both at once there. Yay. Okay, good. Happy. <laughs> uh, if a user is not logged into a machine, would GovLand be able to display the machine that user logged into last? And the answer is yes, but not within remote control. So we have extensive reporting on user logged in log login sessions. It's in either one of our other two modules. And uh, if you provide me with some information, maybe in uh, just a, a chat to me directly um, or something like that, I can follow up with you or we can do a, another demo just on those specific features on how you may be, may be able to do that. And I can even show it to you very quickly here towards the end. But absolutely, you can uh, report on, um, in, like just like I saw here, um, um, I can see 
uh, session history against the user. Yeah, it's 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 within the central server. I guess you could probably pull it out of there. But the answer is yes. We can definitely report on that. <clears throat> so uh, another question here: Is it possible to connect to an agency laptop that is out in the field with only internet access? And again, that goes back to our very next release. So coming out in a couple of weeks. Actually, our internal beta is is uh, due to be launched on Monday. So within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be you're going to be able to drop the agent on any machine, send it out there into the world, and as long as it has an internet connection, you will be able to con connect it unattended, attended. All of the full features of Goverland Remote Control will be available to you uh, within a couple of weeks. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, so um, for the for the user that asked about uh, Mac connections, we do offer support for VNC. So if you did set up VNC, and thank you for mentioning that, um, we do offer support for VNC. So this is just the native VNC tool, but you're using it with within the Goverland uh, um, uh, console. And um, we'll look at some of the advantages of doing that right now. It's actually our next topic, so it's a good segue. So. Um, I'm going to uh, disconnect from this machine here. Uh, let's just close this out. And uh, we are going to connect to um, our Longhorn machine again. And on Longhorn, I have actually a, a um, our, our free remote control uh, tool uh, installed. So we can take a look at that and some of the differences between free remote control and paid. And so you can see that free remote control at any point you can unlock full edition if you decide to buy a license. The license is $250. And you can see that just the premium features are grayed out. So the Goverland protocol, Intel vPro, and Command Pro. Those, those three rely on our agent. You can still use RDP for free. You can still use VNC for free. You can still use Telnet SSH for free. If I hit connect, I can still search for users and it'll detect my logged in workstations. So a key advantage to Goverland free remote control is this right here, right? If you're looking for a way to figure out where my users are logged in with, and like right now you're using RDP um, and you don't want to pay for a solution, uh, download the Goverland remote free remote control because now you can, uh, you know, just search for a user and you're going to know exactly where they're logged. Right. Um, the other things that free supports, I can, you can still see I can support uh, multiple machines at once, supports the monitoring view, I can save the layouts. It's just, you know, obviously the tools are not going to be available to me because those rely on uh, the government agent. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, features that are available to you in free remote control, it's Fast Connect, which is searching for a user and Active Directory integration and all that cool stuff. Uh, layouts, um, um, and you can even save the layout, double click on it, do all that, and, and, um, and uh, you know, support for any one of those three for RDP, VNC, Telnet, SSH. So um, it, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the big difference between free versus paid here, and actually I'll just uh, pull up our site for a second here. And we have a, a page on our site that's going to show you the difference between free, free versus paid. And if you, by the way, if you're a customer and you have you, you have need for a couple of extra licenses, but they're just using RDP or something, you're everybody's welcome to uh, to the free version of Goverland. Just visit our site; and you can grab your copy of it. And uh, it's also free for the first 30 days. All the premium features are unlocked. So you, you'll you'll see down this list on the free remote control page. Uh, just these premium features are not going to be enabled in the uh, free version. Okay, and um, that is uh, close to wrapping it up here. Um, just uh, obviously want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, this was definitely a great session. Really appreciate uh, um, everybody's participation, all, all the questions that came through. Um, if there's any other questions, you can always reach out to us. I am going to show you how to uh, contact us. Um, you can contact our support team at govrland.com slash support. There we go. So uh, there's this little um, 
uh, chat bubble right here. So our, our chat is always open from uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, not always open. But uh, this is always open, contact support. This will just create a ticket for them. They have an SLA against this, so they will definitely reach back out to you. And then we have user guides, tutorials, KBAs. And if you're looking for more recordings, different features of Goverland, how do you do different things, we just relaunched our video library uh, uh, really nice, nice looking. So all of these different technical tra training sessions uh, are all available to you. You can see how to do things like automating IT and, and managing Active Directory and, and, you know, all different training sessions. And today's session will end up in here as well. So uh, give, me a, give me maybe to the end of the day and you'll see it populate. And Joe, thank you for your feedback. Victor in support is definitely awesome. Our support team is top notch. If you haven't interacted with them before, you should definitely, definitely do it. They are, they really know their stuff, and they, we all love this product, obviously. So, um, so with that, we're going to uh, wrap it up. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining today. Uh, any other questions, you can uh, reach out to me. Uh, you can reach me at sales at government.com. Just put attention, Ezra. I will reply right back. Uh, my, my actual email address is ezra.charm at coverland.com, but I don't expect you to remember that. So sales at coverland.com is just a bit easier. You can contact our support team, coverland.com slash support. Uh, you can call us. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from all of you, and I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Um, hope to see you at a future event.